We're here. I'm at the Birmingham Hilton Metropole for the first time in three years. I'm a little bit emotional. <laughs> We're here! There's the Monarch Suite. Oh. I'm home. I'm home. Hello, TF Nation. I missed you so much. <laughs> Let's fucking go! Candice walking down the hall of the shop. Oh, there's Matt. What are you wearing? <laughs> right, I'm gonna just chill out. A little bit. You know what? The drive down wasn't too bad. It only took me two hours without any stops. Um, I'm pretty pleased with that. What are those? Seriously, what are those? Why are there pencils on the window ledge outside the window? What the hell? Let's take a step back here in regards to the script writing process. You get serious backrooms vibes from these corridors. It's like, what's at the end?
hell I'm doing with this? Did it yet? Hey guys, do you reckon that this is good to plug it through in the water? Let's we find out. Let's find out. Yeah. Of 
his material, uh, so we haven't been able to release it yet, but what we did get was permission to give a very detailed summary of you know, what's going on in the movie, how things are different, and what's, what's the real treat. Don't so you want to be showing sure yeah. on the screen here, Maybe we should, too. Maybe we should show it. I think we should. Yeah. Brought to uh, life by a very talented team of artists from TF Nation. Everything we say to you today will be a compliment. You or me? I think that was me. <laughs> All right, so, for both. We'll be accompanied by brand new illustrations featuring some very old Floro Deary designs, some brand new designs that our artists at TF Nation here created. And, uh... Hello, it's me editing Joe, Joe from the future, whatever. Um, I didn't video the entire panel because that would have taken hours. So um, here's just a couple snippets of what happened during the panel. I think it's going to be up at some point, maybe. I don't know. But there's some really cool pictures and things. You should be able to find out about it. I don't know what's going on. Ah!
pleased to tell you that you have been part of the biggest and most well-attended <laughs> Transformers convention in Europe. So give yourself a As you know, uh, Trina and I have been on stage most of this weekend, uh, and we've been putting together all of these uh, presentations for you and uh, basically the program. Um, we've done all sorts this weekend, from showing you unused uh, episodes, clips, to creating wonderful videos, to unearthing hidden treasures. Um, so I want to thank just a few people. Um, I, I'm, I hate doing this because I know I'm going to miss people out. But uh, thank you to Brian Holfield for sorting out the rescue bots. Uh, thank you to Chris McFeely and Chip Sorensen for their wonderful video. Thank you to Mr. Chris Carter for all of the video work he's done. Thank you to Phil and the Gav for helping out. Thank you to everyone, all of our wonderful artists and workers and uh, all year around that produce all this fantastic work. Please join me in welcoming to the stage our four special guests of this weekend. So we have Lindsay Rousseau.
learning this class from the point. doing a video I don't know why I'm doing this end bit I'm probably doing a video summarizing everything but yeah it was so good to be back and I hope we'll be back next year yeah so it's Monday I am back home I got back uh, on the Sunday night around about 10 30 um, left around about nine o'clock it's that point where we talk about the things that I got um, talk about the uh, the experience, you know, the, the weekend, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's stop babbling and uh, let's let's talk about it. <laughs> I want to say a big thank you actually uh, to the entire TF Nation staff, um, uh, the MCs, um, Katrina and David, um, the uh, the team uh, behind kind of organising and stuff. Um, the volunteers and all that, every single one of them made this weekend so, so special, which was very important, um, you know, seeing as it has been um, 20, 20, three years since we were last together um, in, uh, in Birmingham, um, and everyone worked so hard um, to ensure that the convention ran as smoothly as, as, smoothly as possible unlike my speaking and uh, they <laughs> they they succeeded in every possible way and um, yeah it's 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 vitally important that the organizers the the uh, the crew behind the scenes do not go unacknowledged um, so thank you first of all to them I had a fantastic weekend uh, so so enjoyable I met so many lovely people um, thank you to everyone uh, you know the people watching this who came along and um, you know there were people who had pre-ordered some of these uh, Target Alpha Trion posters um, on my socials I put out a little call um, quite last minute um, to see uh, if anyone would like me to print off some of these to collect and uh, anyone who you know, had some of these postcards as well um, which I handed out so anyone who came to get one of those um, thank you so much it uh, I, I, I must have met what about a dozen of you um, throughout the weekend, and every single one of you was was, was so so lovely. I it, the, the pleasure was mine um, to uh, to chat with you guys and spend a bit of time, uh, you know, talking about like ascension, how the how the weekend was going. Um, I mean, yeah, it was uh, it was it was really really special to know that you know I'm. I have that kind of, you know, that you, you think I'm that great. <laughs> uh, it meant a lot. I mean, it's I, I feel quite reinvigorated um, to um, start kind of moving out of moving out my burnout a little bit and making some progress with uh, with attention. So I won't be able to I won't be able to name all of you, um, but if I if I had a chat with you. If I interacted with you at any point during the convention, thank you so much. Um, meant a lot. I bumped into uh, Thew, of course, only about two or three times during the uh, the whole weekend, and they were all very brief. But um, man, man's got so much time uh, for anyone who comes to say hi, and I really appreciated uh, the uh, the moments that we got to uh, to chat and uh, and get a picture as well. So 
thank you buddy. Um, it was really good to see you and uh, hopefully see you again next year. Nate Hammond, uh, or, or as he goes by uh, his Twitter handle, NatePhoenix83, I think it is. Um, We've, you know, we, we, I've, I've bought a whole load of his um, prints, as you can kind of see behind me. These are only two of about what, maybe nine, nine prints that I've got of his. Um, and this was the, this was the second time that I'd met him in person, um, but the first time that I can actually like talk to him and got a chance to actually like hang out and speak and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we've had a we we chatted a, a fair bit on Twitter. Um, really, really lovely guy. Um, I uh, I gave him some uh, Warhammer 40k bits, which uh, we didn't uh, we didn't want in the house anymore. And uh, he's getting he's into 40k um, and got some uh, got uh, two kids who are getting into it themselves. So I figured pass on some of those bits to them, and uh, they'll hopefully get some more enjoyment out of it uh, than I do. Um, so yeah, Nate, a real pleasure to. to you know, it felt, felt like pro properly meet you in the flesh, um, and yeah, really, really appreciated that. Ben, Ben Wasp shot, excellent man. I did a little bit for a zine. Uh, where is it? So I got several bits of um, several bits of paraphernalia from him. These these three items. So this was like a creation myth book that he kind of put together. Um, this is like a kind of flip book of art, which not I don't believe not not his, but he was um, he helped to distribute. Um, but this was the main thing. Uh, earlier this year, he asked me to write a little profile for um, uh, for a toy or a character that I liked for this uh, this fanzine um, that he was distributing free of charge. Um, if you want to just go and ask him for when he had it. Uh, and I wrote a little bit about uh, Super Megatron there. Um, this is specifically the one uh, that appears in the Ascension verse. So there's a there's a bit of um, there's a bit of uh, backstory to him there. Um, but it's talking about it's in the style of the old Dreamwave um, character profiles. So I've got the bio talking about like the um, figure uh, or like well about the history of the character. Um, weapons abilities kind of like about the figure itself why it's kind of so good the weakness is obviously kind of like uh, the things that aren't so great about it um, but yeah this uh, this was really great uh, it was really lovely to be invited on to be part of this so Ben thank you so much um, I, I, it, it's always a pleasure to uh, to work with you on something and always a pleasure to hang out uh, in the bar and just like even if you know we're not necessarily like chatting an awful lot we're just kind of sat there filling with our, with our latest purchases it's just yeah it, it, it's always great to hang out, hang out with you man so yeah thank you let's talk let's talk about the guests i think so there were uh, four kind of like the non-regular guests um there was uh, so there's brian holfeld and nicole dubuc i think that's how you pronounce her surname I'm very sorry if i'm getting it wrong um who were two of the um creatives behind the rescue bots cartoon i think Transformers prime as well part of that um they had a few panels like talking about um, the uh, uh, writing for animation. Um, I noticed a lot of parallels, you know, obviously with my own writing and uh, and creating um, in terms of like how a story goes from uh, the kind of like initial pitch to uh, an outline, a synopsis uh, to a full script. Um, <laughs> they spoke as well about um, uh, a show bible, which uh, a lot of lot like loads of shows have. Um, and typically those things are about 20 to 30 pages, I think they said. Um, the uh, Ascension Verse show bible is in the region of four to five hundred pages. Um, so I found that really hilarious, that kind of comparison. Um, but um, I, I had, had a chance to speak to them um, and tell them a little bit about that. Um, and yeah, it was, uh, it was really interesting hearing them, uh, like, hearing them talk about their uh, their experience with uh, with writing and kind of getting into that kind of stuff. So Lindsay Rousseau, um, who voices uh, Elita One in the Netflix uh, Transformers cartoon, so the Siege Earthrise Kingdom, that was it. Um, I had a chance to meet her. Really, really lovely. Um, very interesting, um, like background in terms of. Like um, she, she had some like military experience, some service experience, um, and she talked a little bit about how kind of like that helped influence her character. Um, so yeah, getting to chat with her was really, really lovely. Got this lovely print um, 
artwork by Livio Ramondelli, um, and which you signed in the top corner there. The biggest guest uh, was, of course, Mr. Gary Chalk, of uh, obviously the voice of Optimus Primal in Beast Wars and Beast Machines, um, Optimus Prime in the Unicorn Trilogy, um, amongst many, many other amazing credits. Um, as many of you will know, um, he voiced uh, Hound as well in the Target Alpha Trion movie that we made last year. Um, so it was really cool. I went to speak to him and uh, told him that uh, that uh, I was, uh, you know, we, we made the film, um, and he remembered it. It was really cool. Um, so uh, I got a signed print from him here, just signed on the top there. I went with the with this Optimus one because Cybertron Optimus was the first Prime that I really came across. Um, so that one was really, really nice. Uh, but as you saw before, I brought a print of the Target Alpha Triumph poster for him to sign. And there it is. Uh, really, really cool. Very grateful. I, I, I think next time that Peter Spellos is in the UK, I feel like I need to ask him to sign it as well. You know, I'd really like to help you, but sorry, friend. That's classic. <laughs> So those were the um, those were the the kind of the guesty guests, the uh, the the non regulars. Um, I did get a chance, of course, to speak to a couple of the regular guests. I got a chance to speak to Jack Lawrence. Um, I had a commission uh, from him. I requested a commission. Unfortunately, it wasn't ready in time for the show, um, but uh, that's fine. I'll just get it mailed out, um, and I know it's going to be amazing. Uh, while I did, you know, I got a picture with him and. Uh, a big old hug. He's a great hugger, by the way. And uh, I got the Lost Light series Bible from him. Only cost a tenner, um, and he signed it in the uh, in the in the front cover there. Um, but this is a really cool. It's um, all the reference images that he had for the um, the Lost Light crew in the Lost Light comic. Um, it's so cool to see these designs and like how how these sketches have been done, yeah, the character studies, how they've been done uh, so that you've got, you've got a good reference to refer back to um, when you're doing different different angles and different poses and stuff like that. Um, yeah, this was very, very nice. Thank you, Jack. I spoke to James Roberts briefly. I didn't get a signature, unfortunately. Um, I just didn't get, uh, I didn't have the time uh, to, um, to get to his uh, table properly and get some of those um, Matum tea notebooks that look really really cool. I did stop off at uh, Nick Roche's table um, I did request a commission off him and uh, it's this here. I'll show you in a second um, It was uh, I was waiting in line for about an hour because he was um, he, he was uh, I think because he was just so so busy with um, like his various panels at, at the con um, and I'm sure there are many other reasons behind it um, but I don't think everyone's commissions were ready in time for the show so this one that I requested had pencils um, and luckily I was able to uh, I was well, very lucky to see it actually get inked um, while I waited um, but it was like in the last hour of the uh, of the um, the trailer hall being open but I got this lovely lovely headshot of Super Megatron of course again the, um, the Target Alpha Trion version and I mean, look at that. He's got the same quote that I put in the um, RR Cozine, which is um, one of my favorite lines from Target Alpha Trion that Megatron says. Nick Roche's art style is just perfect for, um, for Megatron. Just look how sharp that is. That is absolutely gorgeous. The last thing that I got signed, um, obviously I kept one of these postcards for myself and uh, I got all of the, um, the special guests to sign it. So Lindsay Rizzo, Gary Chalk, uh, Nicole and Brian on the back there. I reckon I might keep this and like, look, obviously I'll keep it, but like I might um, use, like have it for a future convention so uh, more guests can sign either side and really kind of fill it up. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, that was uh, that was the last thing that I got signed. So that that's pretty much everyone that, like, that I met in terms of like guests and uh, uh, other kind of personalities and some of you guys as well um, and yeah some of the prints that I got signed as well yeah, I think everything all the art and stuff that I, that I got I got signed by the uh, by the creators um, and yeah uh, that was really cool so 
it's toy time. So Friday, uh, the trader hall is closed. It doesn't open until Saturday morning. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a few bots on the go. Um, so I did bring one bot with me to open when I arrived. I got the new uh, Velocitron Road Rocket. And this is my first experience with the RC uh, Legacy Mold. Um, and it's, it's, it's good. She, her arms like, like to fall off very often. Um, and she is a little bit loose um, on some of the joints. Um, but she's all right. She's kind of fun. Uh, I had a, it was a, a nice little kind of taster, a little starter for the um, uh, to kick off the weekend. There was an Australian man called Jason. Who goes by uh, JM77 on Twitter. Um, I've uh, uh, I've met him once before. I think at the 2019 convention where I got a kind of really nice Matrix pin. Um, but he was uh, he was going around the convention each day. He'd have like a bag of like freebies and stuff. And to get one of these freebies, all you had to say was um, a, uh, a secret code phrase. Um, I believe on Friday the code phrase was uh, "Getaway was right." So I screamed that, and I got myself a little G1 Mixmaster, which is my first ever constructor con. Well, G1 constructor con. Um, for some reason, he had about seven of these, like but like just Mixmaster, no other constructor cons. No other combiner or weapon pieces, uh, just a sing like solo mix masters. Um, but you know what? He's really fun. This is what I love about the G1 figures is that, especially these ones, that they're just so easy to convert. It's like a little kind of like flick, like a flick knife or something like that. Um, so I can turn him into a leg. I can flip him between his modes really easily. But this was a fun little thing to get on the first day, so thank you, Jason. I met uh, Matt Cuff there as well, who goes by 360 Verse on YouTube. He's the voice of Cliff Jumper uh, in the Ascension Verse. Um, he had one or two things for me, a few little freebies. He had, oh, in fact, let's go with this. Um, our friend Mason uh, sent him one of these uh, Bricktober Lego packs. This is the Jurassic World set. And there's some really cool figures in this, so I said, "Yeah, I'll have this as a little freebie." Come on then, and a little um, open open shirt Jeff Goldblum in there. There he is. He's very bronzed. He gave me uh, R.A.D. Blast Wave with um, Shatterglass symbol on the uh, on his shoulder there. Um, no sword. I think he used he was using it for a for a custom of his, but that's fine. Um, it's the first time that I've used this mold, I think, and. Um, it's it's a decent mold. It's some very interesting colours, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's, uh, I was quite enamoured with him on uh, on the Friday. Uh, really really fun to play with and and uh, convert. Um, so yeah, it was a nice little nice little starter. And the last thing that I got from Matt uh, was little Titans Return Cosmos. I have the Thrilling Thirty One. Um, it's showing its age a little bit. Um, this one is a little bit too, the head's quite loose, quite wobbly, but it's really, really nice. I prefer this over the um, the Velostron one. I don't care what you think of me. <laughs> Although I did have a go with um, uh, with that. Matt, Matt brought his Cosmos along and I did have a play with it. And I yeah, really, really liked it. Um, but aesthetically, this is the Cosmos for me. And moving on to Saturday, um, I end up with, I think, with about five figures. Um, and uh, one of the first ones that I picked up was this absolutely gorgeous girl. This is the Studio Series Bumblebee Movie RC. Um, I've had my eye on her ever since she was revealed. Um, you know, keeping an eye out for stock on like Smiths and places like that. I've, I figured it was very likely she'd be available at the convention, and I just had to get her. And she's really, really good. Transforming her is a little bit fiddly, especially trying to get the legs and the um, the, the the upper body to kind of like close together in uh, in vehicle mode but it's such a good vehicle mode though um, she's really 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 fun to mess with very very poseable she can do like the kind of um, I think this was a, an intentional design choice like a, for like a movie concept or something like that um, but she can do like the wheel feet and roll around uh, kind of thing. She is excellent. A, a while back I was um, googling um, the uh, suppressor minicon that came with uh, Throwing 30 Cliff Jumper. On the image search there was another minicon called suppressor and it was this little fella um, who is an Armada minicon um, turns into a um, something like the kind of Sentinel Prime Rosenbauer 
fire truck um, in yellow and it's a hazmat vehicle of some kind. Um, but yeah, saw this on Toy Foo for three quid um, and nabbed him straight away. Just looked really cool. I like yellow fire trucks. So I ended up with um, two versions of the um, the Blastwave uh, Megatronus mold from RAD, and one of them was uh, Megatronus himself. Um, I want to repurpose him as some kind of like Golden Age senator on the um, uh, for the Cybertronian Senate. Um, I think I want to do him as like Tracon or something. Um, but yeah, he's a uh, He's, a, he's, yeah, he's about the same as, as Blast Wave, like, they transform exactly the same. Um, some interesting kind of design stuff going on there. Um, nothing massively special, but uh, still, like, very poseable, actually. And I will say this for the R.I.D. line, is that even though the, the cartoon itself was quite weak, a lot of the toys were pretty excellent, actually, and they they had very good build quality, and this is this is very well put together. So I picked up uh, one or two bargains from the Space Bridge, um, who were one of the vendors, and surprisingly, like, halfway through the Saturday, they put a half-price sale on a whole bunch of their pre-owned stuff. Um, so I grabbed myself a Leader Class 2007 Megatron for £10. Uh, he's complete. I don't think his uh, his lights are working, but his um, his sounds I don't believe are. So maybe that would need to change of batteries. Um, but I've never owned this mold. Um, I I've had the or I have the 2007 Optimus I got in the last few years. First leader figures that I got were the um, Revenge of the Fallen Optimus and Megatron. Um, but uh, yeah, I've always wanted to give this guy a try, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he's very hefty. I always find these figures interesting, the 2007 figures, because like. It's such a radical aesthetic change from the Cybertron and Energon lines, um, but um, they have to kind of incorporate, you know, the, it, it's the same engineering, but a radically different aesthetic. Um, and it's really interesting to see how they kind of worked with that brief there. Um, but yeah, he's really cool, very, very fun to, to play with. Legs are a real pain to get into his, um, into his jet mode, but 10 pounds. £10, alright? This wasn't my last purchase of the Saturday, um, but it was uh, the biggest surprise, and I figured I would save that one for last for covering this day. Um, this is Energon Dreadwing. Um, as I understand it, this was one of the last figures in the Energon line, and so it didn't get a wide release, uh, worldwide at least. Uh, I'm not sure if the UK ever got it, um, but... Uh, I spotted this guy on um, G-Works. Uh, it, it does like um, 3D printed things and like dist distributes for uh, non-F. He had this guy on his table uh, for 60 quid and I was really enamored with him. I'd walk by every so often and think like, he looks good, he looks good. Thought about it and thought about it. I was like, you know what? I just had to bite the bullet and get him. And I did, um, had a minor buyer's remorse for the first like, 10 to 15 minutes like have I spent too much on this thing but then I figured out how to do the boat mode and yeah stolen my heart he's beautiful he's so much fun um, I love how he looks that's proper excellent that uh, yeah and that uh, so that was the Saturday transforming toys there are a few other little things I got um, like I said I, I passed a G works um, little station and uh, got myself some uh, black non F feet for the um, DK to guard, whatever his name is. Um, I'm still working on putting the whole thing together, but I got some bits for Wheeljack to give him some new wings, some tools, some new, and uh, a missile launcher, and a gun as well. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was really cool. So yeah, thank you, Mike, much appreciated. And the last thing I can remember I bought on a Saturday uh, were these that all roll in Repugni. Um, I think I pre-ordered these from uh, Gav Spence, who does uh, TRDQ on YouTube. It's a little, it's a little game that you can play with mates. You got two, two little repugnances, the Titan Return figure, um, and you just kind of uh, roll them at the same time. And then there's little like scores that you can get depending on uh, where, like how they end up landing. The uh, all the proceeds for that was ten pounds went to Toy Fu. That was really cute. Moving on to Sunday. Now Sunday is where things really start to kick off. So I believe one of my first purchases of Sunday, I can't really remember, was this. 
the uh, Age of Extinction Helicopter Drift, which is a repaint of Skyhammer from uh, Dark of the Moon. Um, Obviously, I've had some experience with the with the Skyhammer mold. Um, I made a Megatron with it, and I had a Junker one as well, which was kind of practice for that. Um, and my plan is, I'm going to take off this really stupid, horrible head, which I hate. I'm going to uh, take one of the uh, spare Skyhammer heads that I've got, pop it on there, and I've got a brand new character that is not a racial stereotype. Uh, got another deal from the Space Bridge, another half price figure. Got myself. 2007 landmine. Um, it's kind of fun. I kind of like it. Four pounds. Can't really complain. I think he's probably like my least favorite or the kind of like least exciting figure because just like I saw the deal, wanted to give it a try, and I got it. Um, so yeah, he's kind of fun. Definitely got some issues, but yeah, he is what he is. I think I got this guy from Toy Fu, but I picked up a new um, complete. Revenge of the Fallen Knockout. I did have one of these uh, for a little while. It was missing one of the leg panels um, and I kept trying to source one, but just no luck. So I donated my old one and uh, by good fortune, there was a fresh one at, yeah, I think Toy Fu. So I grabbed him, very happy. He gives me kind of like Waspinator vibes with those colors. So um, maybe he could be like an Ascension verse Wasp. I recently uh, donated my old uh, Robots in Disguise Prime Starscream, the Voyager figure, to um, to Matt so he can make a Legion Maximo custom. Um, the very same Starscream that was the original Shattered Glass Starscream in Broken Mirror. Um, but I've been lacking a, uh, a Prime Starscream on my shelf for many, many years and uh, I found the first edition one for 25 quid. Grab that from the Kapow pre-owned. -pre and you know what, I love this. Um, I have the Slipstream version, um, as you may already know, probably already do know, um, and it's very good. Not great at like animating, which is why I'm gonna try and move over to my new custom one that I've kind of put together. Um, but in terms of like personality and aesthetic, uh, this guy does it so well. He's so good at just like kind of groveling, bowing poses and stuff like that. And he's got so much more personality in him and then the, uh, than the Voyager figure, so very pleased I got this one here. Picked up these two from Barry Shaw, I can't remember what the name of his uh, stand was, but I got these two for uh, a fiver each. Uh, Spy Changers, Ultra Magnus and Optimus Prime from the RAD line. Um, yeah, for a fiver, cannot say no. I've got a couple of Spy Changers already. These will look really, really good next to them. Um, very happy with them. Very limited in terms of what they can do, um, but, Slap them together. Really easy. There we go. There's Magnus. Cool little pocket sized matchbox. No, not matchbox. Hot, hot wheel sized car carrier there. Um, I love that. <laughs> I love that Optimus cannot stand uh, unless you've got the uh, the ladder propping him up. Because uh, if you try and pose it in any other way. He's going backwards, mate. Not long after, in fact, while I was waiting in line for Nick Roche, um, I headed back over to Barry's stand and picked up these two. Uh, I believe these are Energon Stormcloud and Kickback, and they are components of the Bruticus Combiner. Um, I wanted some generic looking Decepticons who could be easily edited in, um, uh, like in post to be different colors and stuff like that and uh, these two fit the bill very, very nicely. He did, he did them at a deal for me, actually. These were 30 quid for the two. And then we come to the final five minutes of the trader hall. I've only just gotten away from Nick Roche's table um, and do my kind of last rounds. They've given the kind of 15 minute announcement that the, uh, the trader hall will be closing soon. And I've still got about 55 quid in pocket. Um, so I head around to, I can't remember the name of their table. Um, but it was one of the tables that was opposite the space bridge. They had a couple interesting things on there. They had the Earthrise cone heads, I think about 100 a pop. They had a Siege Skywarp um, at uh, 80 pounds, I think it was. Um, and I spotted something on that table there. And um, unfortunately, I only had. I picked it up, and I was I was looking at it, kind of, you know, doing the mental gymnastics in my head. Um, how can I can I haggle this? Can I haggle this thing? Um, and I spoke to the lady behind, behind the um, behind the table, just like I've only got 55 left in my pocket. Um, and she's like, oh, it's it's a bit a bit shy of the minimum I would give it. If she said 65, like I could I could probably sell it to you. And I asked her, do you have a card machine? 
And she said, yes. And I said, damn. So I pulled out my wallet, paid 65 quid for Siege Skywarp and all three of his Minicom thingy Battle Masters. And yeah, happy with that. That's another Seeker Trio complete. Love it. Love it. I lied. There was one more purchase that I got from Barry Stall. Um, I wanted another little uh, Decepticon for my G1 shelf. Um, I recently got rid of my uh, G1 Stalker. Um, it just it didn't have all the bits. I it was like totally incomplete. It was missing every single one of the accessories that you could detach from it. Um, I've got Mixed Master, and I did actually forget that I had Mixed Master when I uh, when I um, <laughs> went for this. Um, but I wanted a little um, little something. I got myself uh, G1 Swindle, the only Combaticon with a personality. Um, <laughs> I felt a little guilty about wanting to get Swindle without his Combaticon mates. Um, the guy behind the stand said that he had another Swindle, um, so they wouldn't be alone. So I picked up G1 Swindle for £10, and he's going to go sit loud and proud on my G1 shelf with Astro Train and Mix Master. It's going to be a very eclectic bunch. Who doesn't love Swindle? Who doesn't? How can you dislike that face that you can't really see because the lighting is shocking? And with that, I think that's everything. There was a handful of other things actually. I got a t-shirt from Barry. Another thing I got from Barry was this little key, key fob thing. So you like, you stick this arc silhouette to the wall and then the Autobot symbol kind of comes out of that and you've got your key hanging off it and then just pop it back in like so. It's really fun. Okay, I lied. This was the final thing I got. It was literally in the last five minutes. Um, I picked up some of these really cool little Energon crystals. It was like one pound 50 for, for 10 uh, so I didn't spend all that much to get these, um, but I figured they'd be nice little props for like kind of mind energy. I don't know where his leg has ended up, but I, <laughs> this was another thing that I had to shout a controversial thing uh, to get from Jason Murray. Um, this weird little thrust. I know that his leg and his stand are around here somewhere. I don't know what the hell this is. He's so <laughs> he's so strange, and he made me laugh so much just because of how weird he looked. Um, I, I, I will probably research this on TF Wiki and find out what it is, um, but yeah, he's just... <laughs> his stupid face! I love that! And there we are! I think that is everything. I probably have missed one or two things, but that happens, you know? Um, all that's really left to say is, um, again, thank you to everyone. Um, everyone that I chatted to, everyone that I got to meet. Um, thank you again to the entire TF Nation team. I want to say a big congratulations as well to Toy Fu, who made £19,000 uh, and counting from their charity efforts. Um, all of that is going to uh, the charity Mary's Meals. So that that's an incredible number. Well done to the entire team for that. And I think that's that's pretty much everything. I may be going to the uh, the Manchester Minicon in March. Um, I'll see, I'll see what's happening, um, but uh, like uh, like the man said, come hell or high water, I will see you next year for TF Nation. So take it easy, guys. Stay safe. I don't know how to sign off for these things. Take care. <laughs> see you around. Is that hit rapper and artist? Oh!